It's Friday Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. God, it's Feedback Friday. And I'm in a good mood this Feedback Friday because I started Yakuza Kiwami 2 and it's a shit ton of fun. Uh, sometimes little things make me happy. A lot of times little things make me happy. I, I like having little things make me happy because then it's easy to make me happy. Um, it's been an interesting week. Uh, I am going to talk more about self-validation because uh, people asked and I asked whether you wanted it. So I'm uh, going to, let's do the Patreon first. Uh, we'll, we'll do some other stuff as well, but that's going to be the main thrust of this video. Um, with a, with a bit of an anecdote, uh, for my life where <laughs> you see the name of this video, um, I'll, uh, I'll get into that after this. Help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, or buy a, uh, one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use but can't afford it, coffee.com slash Leanna K. Again, six people requiring subsidized, um, uh, Leanna Care, uh, services right now. Um... We are doing, if you are a writer or interested in that sort of thing, the Writer's Quorum uh, is meeting next Tuesday again. We have a couple more slots if anybody wants to join us for that. Um, the link to that it is the Bubbles link in the description box if you are interested. Check it out. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting week. Um... The comments on the Manly Monday video were, were really cool. A lot of people were like, okay, yeah, this is me. Um, one person, it, it's been weird because there were a couple comments that talked about women having innate value to society in a way that men don't. And then I like go on Twitter and it's, you know, the JK Rowling flying monkeys telling me I'm a horrible person who wants to harm women. And then I've got the, um, the, I don't even know what to call them, but the, the people who are trying to, I don't know, on, on the trans stuff, calling me a transphobe because I won't call people transphobes merely for buying Hogwarts Legacy. So, you know, obviously there are contradictory opinions here. Um, because of course the people who support JK Rowling, it says women are in danger. And you know, then there are the nonsense gender done straight people are in danger because the world doesn't care about us. I'm hearing that a lot. The world doesn't care about trans people. And then, you know, I hear white straight cisgender men say the world cares about everyone but us. Nobody feels cared about. And that's, a, in a big part, I always say it's not, the world doesn't care about anybody. The people around you care about you. And I can't say in each individual microcosm, whether men are treated as disposable or women are treated as disposable, in some microcosms that could very well be true. It's just, you can't say anything like that the world over. Right. I mean, the the best example is, you know, uh, what's called sex selective abortions, that it was a big problem with the one child policy in China, where if you only had one kid, they wanted to be boy. You can't say women have innate value in society in that structure. Um, and of course, people are talking about the Western world. I don't and again, culture is too big and complex and messy to make things that simple. And what I can validate about that statement is that something in these people's lives has given them reason to believe this. What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't have to be so. You can get better people around you who treat people differently than you're being treated. By the way, I got this mug as a, as a holiday present. Isn't it nice? This is just a beautiful Boba Fett mug. Um, anyway, um, th these are little things that I use to self-validate. 
Um, one shithead on Instagram insulted the bear my mother gave me. And I, I, what, limited? You can limit on Instagram? It's like, fuck that shit. And sometimes setting boundaries like that is in itself an act of self-validation. Being able to say, access to me is a privilege. I don't have to take this is a big act of self-validation that I believe certain aspects of both meat space and the internet have eroded in a lot of people. There was a, I know I talk about the education system a lot, but I do think that that's a big root of this never learning to self-validate. Because when I was in school, it was, you don't like them, they don't like you, I don't want to see you anywhere near each other. Like, go to your different corners, avoid each other, you don't have to talk to each other, you don't have to work with each other, you don't have to... That makes sense to me. There are some people, for really no good reason, that you don't like and they don't like you. And you can acknowledge that you don't like somebody without thinking they're a bad person. They just rub you the wrong way. Something changed to you're all friends here, you're all on the same team, and it's this forcing people into close proximity and forcing them to fake that they're getting along. And I think that the inability to limit access to your time, energy, and attention really invalidates a person. You, you have to be able to set those limits and you know i i had a i had a self-validating moment this may sound kind of weird but i talked about this on nerd at newsstand stream in a very comical over-the-top fake angry way dan slot blocked me on twitter a fucking again and it, he just goes on these mass blocking sprees um a uh, song told me that, you know, he's nicknamed Slotto Blocktavius in quarters of the internet for a reason. And it was another one of those ones where, oh, get a friend to tell me that you were, that you think you were blocked by mistake and I'll unblock you. And this is like, like the third round of this shit with this guy. And I did the same, what for me is very validating. Uh, self-validating that I did with the stupid Gamergate block list is no, I'm not coming on bended knee begging to be taken off this list. I am not. Um, fuck off. Um, not everybody would be okay with staying blocked by someone whose work they respect. Um, I am. Because the attitude is, I am a person, I decide how it's okay to treat me, and I don't care who you are, you don't make me beg. That works for me. It may not work for you, but it might. Another thing that I've, it, it took me a while to get better at, was when it comes to someone asking me how much my services will cost. I don't try to figure out the number they're going to say yes to. I just say, this is what I charge. And if they don't take it, they don't. If they do, well, then the job is worth me taking, right? Because um, if you undercharge, then you're working like a dog and not getting ahead. And uh, I find that, I find that's a way I self-validate. Um, another way I'm trying to get better at self-validating is allowing myself rest days, allowing myself to, if I am feeling run down, reschedule, cancel stuff, uh, slowing down when I need to. It's something I'm still not good at, but I'm working on because that's telling me, telling myself I'm worth not feeling tired all the time. And to me, that's very important. Again, for other people, these things might not help. Everybody has a different language that makes them feel better. 
And it's really important to find out what yours is and being able to communicate it. There was this really sweet comment where somebody talked about their their partner finally saying to them, like, like they came to them with this real sense of gravity saying, there's something I need to talk to you about. You know, we were watching the show and I lost interest in it and or you lost interest in it. I'm going to watch it on my own. OK. And the person said it. They realized that that was a big step for them because it was the first time they felt valid enough to say, I want to do something. And that is a pretty major thing for a lot of people. I know one of the things that I really struggle with, and we're, we're going to talk about this on a on an upcoming episode of Two Women Talking. There's two big buttons for me, and you know, I'm I'm, I'm talking about this in public because a big button for me still isn't that big. A lot of trauma work, right? But at at a time, um, I I am a recovering anorexic. I don't come out and just say that because, again, there's this image of people, you know, that way. It was a teenager. Um, but the whole fat thing is a real thing. You feel the brain itch and it's way better than it used to be. But it's it's also better now that I'm older, <sighs> you know, People don't see me that way anyway. Women in their 40s are not seen that way. And so the pressure's off. And I could choose to look at that as, oh my God, now nobody wants me, you know, fall into that trap. I choose not to. The narrative I choose to set is, oh, thank God, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Who the fuck cares, right? But I'm sure I'm not the only person who's been through that struggle and... It, it is self-validating for me to recognize those sensitivities and so I can become less sensitive to it. So now it doesn't bother me that much and, and so I can talk about it. Um, you know, the, the other one is, oh yeah, the dismissing stuff for girls as crap. This happened a lot with the... Uh, I, I noticed it a lot when I worked in music programming, when I worked in music television, but also when I was a, a, a kid even, you know, 12, 13 years old and everybody was really into boy bands. This sounds really embarrassing. It's embarrassing to admit this. Um, I pretended to be into boy bands a lot more than I was because I wanted something to talk to people about. Uh, interestingly, I know as much about Harry Potter as I do just because it was a common activity that other women liked as well. I mean, every so often I, I find something that I can tolerate. That's the irony of, of what's going on right now. Um, but... Uh, you know, I, I learned a ton about Harry Potter so I could talk to people about it. So I had something to talk to other women about. Because most of my interests are not stuff other women like. But I noticed that when I talked about, you know, liking Nirvana or liking Pearl Jam or Nine Inch Nails or even, you know, Depeche Mode got more pushback. Um, the Cure got more pushback. But, you know, those sorts of bands it was like oh yeah smashing pumpkins oh yeah but whenever it was I don't know I'm trying to think of I mean new kids on the block was the big one when I was a kid but then there were a bunch of others those are all oh, their crap <sighs> is new kids on the block objectively as solid pop music as say backstreet boys or in sync no I will give you that but crap there are a lot of shitty rock bands, you know. Um, I was so into Nirvana in the 90s. So into Nirvana. Like, oh my God, when, when Kurt Cobain died by suicide, that was a big fucking deal for me. 
wrote poetry for the school yearbook, all that stuff. Like, yeah, cliche, cliche. Um, but I go back and listen to those Nirvana records. Now, In Utero still holds. Um, but a lot of, especially the earlier stuff, it doesn't resonate me the with me the way it did then. And stuff like Pearl Jam resonates with me a lot more now. I think maybe I understand the lyrics a little better or I relate to them. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins were massive dicks to me at an event and I couldn't listen. Siamese Dream was, you know, one of my favorite albums for a long time. Couldn't listen to Gish, couldn't listen to Siamese Dream for a long time. I'm back on it now. I'm over it. But that bad experience just, no, nah, fuck it. Fuck you, Billy Corrigan. You were a dick. Dead to me for a while. Um, you know, but if, if I, I, and so I am very careful because if I had heard Nirvana for the first time, like if I'd heard Nevermind for the first time now, I, in another life, I probably would have dismissed it as crap. But as a kid, I loved it. You know, I mean, One Direction is the one I'm kind of like, eh. I, I find Harry Styles interesting as a personality, but his music just doesn't click with me. But I'm not going to call it crap. I'm not. Because me not liking it, me not connecting with it, doesn't mean it's crap. And I, because seeing it, being a girl that isn't into girl things had made me has made me really prick up my ears at that dismissing stuff primarily for girls as shit you know stuff that guys like is primarily dismissed as scary or, or bad or evil right violent neither are true and I do think we have to be really really careful and it's interesting that I'm more defensive I'm more protective of that because it's something I realize benefits me to an extent, right? People take me more seriously because I don't like typical girl things. And I don't think that's right. And that's one of the reasons I, I started Two Women Talking with Song. Because obviously she's much more... I wouldn't say she's a typical person because she's so smart. But, you know, she's more girly than me. That's why she's girly girl and I'm tomboy. And I'm really glad people are embracing that series because of that. I think it's very, very important that not just women's voices, but feminine perspectives. I don't consider my perspective feminine, right? Um, even though people see me as a woman, my inner voice is Kratos. Um, and so I really want, you know, traditionally female things to be seen on an equal footing as the dumb shit I like, because I, I know some of the guy stuff I like. I know it's not high art. I just like it. You know, I like the dumb shit in Doom, where he's like punching buttons with severed limbs instead of, you know, instead of just pushing it. The stupid gets fired in out of like a plasma cannon and punches a hole in a planet. It's stupid. I like it. You know, I love the Yakuza games. I started Yakuza Kiwami too, like I said. I love it. It's stupid. It's stupid. It's still poignant, but it's stupid. And this brings me to why I am very proud that both sides of the culture were pissed off at me over my comments on Hogwarts Legacy. I am fucking thrilled by this. In part because I am something of an asshole and I am aware of that and I try to keep it in check. So I sat with this and it's not because I'm making just people in general mad. Because that's the whole loser thing where sometimes people are legitimately upset and I care about that. But in this case, both sides are trying to push me to label other people a thing so I don't get labeled a thing. And that 
is some of the most dishonorable behavior that I can think of. Oh, you want me to sell out other people, say something I don't believe just to save my own fucking skin? You don't know me at all. And like, who are you? And it got to the point with the, the sort of trans side. And I'm very careful about this because I don't want to say trans activists because these people aren't. They're just people with opinions on Twitter. I have found that the people who actually do real street level activism all the time, uh, who actually do the work, are more in line with me. Who cares? It's a fucking video game. This isn't worth alienating people over. Um, but just randos, you know, these, pr these people I've never met before saying things like, I followed you because I thought you were supportive of trans issues, but you better issue a major mea culpa or I'm going to block you. It's like, bye-bye. Because my whole point is just because JK Rowling says buying the game is supporting reviews doesn't make it so. This is a woman who also said no group deserves blanket presumption of innocence because she's so blinded by her fear and hatred of, of well, men by way of trans people. Every group gets presumption of innocence because every person gets presumption of innocence. And then her flying monkeys start jumping on me. That wasn't the context in which she said it. It doesn't matter. No matter what context she says it in, She's wrong. She's wrong. She's wrong. She's wrong. She is stupid wrong. They bring up background checks, for instance, for people who work at childcare facilities. Background checks work on presumption of innocence because if a background check comes up clean, you are presumed to have done nothing wrong and it's okay. Without presumption of innocence, you would actively have to prove you never did anything that's a red flag for the organization. That's impossible. Which is why a backbone of civil society is innocent until proven guilty. And it's the same thing with this Hogwarts legacy stuff. Both ethically and practically. Presumption of innocence is the correct move. You know, I, it's very interesting how many people this week have told me privately that they're going to try Hogwarts Legacy. And a few people admitted that they're going to buy it just because they got pissed off at people assuming things about people's purchasing decisions. So it's a bit of a protest. And, and that's why coercive, um, coercive boycott campaigns tend to backfire. Because people get, I talk about re emotional reactance a lot. And, you know, Rage Against the Machine was another man. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Right? That's what happens to people. The minute you engage in politicized hyperbole, people go, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. And they're as likely to do the opposite that you want them to do as get in line. I try to make sure I'm neither. I try to make sure I'm in a null state where I'm not being pushed one way or the other by, by these coercive tactics. And I am talking with a PR expert in doing some um, workshops on persuasion versus coercion. She's amazing. And I'm really excited to share it with you guys when we get this together. This is something you are not going to want to miss if you're interested in communication at all. But for now, I don't, well, people don't know me, right? And they, they think, I mean, it got to a ridiculous point where somebody with Karl Marx in their banner started lecturing me on the anti-Semitism of the Harry Potter games. And I agree, there's some anti-Semitic stereotypes in the Harry Potter franchise. I don't think a lot of people know what they are when they see the goblins. And that 
stereotype is so common in fantasy that that's another one I just kind of suck up. I mean, Bravos being the financial center of the, the, you know, the Seven Kingdoms in Game of Thrones is also, you know, it's very clearly a Moroccan-inspired sort of Sephardic Jewish thing. It's the same trope. Oh, Jewish bankers who everybody, they control the world economy. Great, right? But, you know, my own experiences with anti-Semitism and gingerphobia, people laugh at me all the time about gingerphobia, but I can show you articles. A kid in Calgary got beat up at school over that kick a ginger thing from South Park, yeah? And the judge let the people who did it off the hook because they claimed they'd been influenced by media. And that kick a ginger episode was a satire of that shit. That's how, you know, it... I grew up being told that I was going to hell because I had spotted skin. Pale spotted skin. Some evangelical um, churches, mega churches, um, believe that that is a mark of Satan. And I was told that to my face when I was in like the seventh grade. So, you know, I'm used to being proverbially burned at the stake from a very young age. I'm used to being told I'm terrible, evil, going to hell with no or very flimsy evidence for a long time. It, it really has become part of my identity. And I have an allergy to pandering because of this, because I think when people start pandering, when people start saying things just as a populist appeal, not because they truly believe it, you don't respect yourself. You don't respect the people you're talking to. That is really different than crafting a sincere, legitimate message to the people you're speaking to. That is saying something you don't believe to either suck money out of people or manipulate them. Those are very completely different things. And anybody who thinks I'm going to sell out a group of people, even people I don't like, to save myself has me so backward. I am going to dig in on principle, especially if it is someone I don't like, especially if it is someone I think is a bad person in other ways. It's why I go on about Hassan Piker's shiny, shiny, pretty hair, right? Because one, that's the definition of bigotry, right? When you're so blinded by hatred uh, for a person or a group of people that you can't admit when they have a valid point or they've done something right. That is something that harms your decision making. I don't want to do that. You know, that's, that's why they say, that, that's when they say check your biases, right? Make sure you're not getting blinded by either fear or hatred or bitterness to the point that it makes you, you know, situationally stupid. And that's the mistake J.K. Rowling made with that ridiculous presumption of innocence quote that is going to dog her forever. That hands down is something like the other things I can understand people can't see why it's transphobic. She's just looking out for cisgender women, it doesn't mean she hates trans people, but that, no, that, she's a smart enough woman. She understands these concepts enough. She's educated enough. If she wasn't blinded by fear, hatred, or fury, she would realize how stupid a comment that was. That is functionally how bigotry works. That is how bigotry and bias make you stupid. And so I don't care how much shit I take for saying I don't think um, 
people who buy Hogwarts Legacy are immediately transphobic, even though, yes, I do see the argument that it it strengthens J.K. Rowling's brand. I've had conversations about this and a number of times. People, she is so fucking rich that more money really doesn't matter to her. She's probably got somebody who's invested in things that just pay her dividends. She could make not another cent from the Harry Potter IP and still be fucking filthy rich. It doesn't matter anymore and people who hold that perspective and just go it makes me happy it's childhood nostalgia these games were my lifeline and I'm not willing to give that up just because I think the woman is hateful I'm going to donate the purchase price of the game to a trans charity that's how their conscience is clear I can't claim that's a transphobic act I can't because the charities end up getting more money. Like they end up getting like 60 bucks and JK Rowling might get 60 cents if she gets any residuals at all. Calling that transphobic is illogical to me. I can't do it. I don't believe it. And yeah, this is going to make people call me names. Oh, well, you know, transphobe mud blood what's the fucking difference right pedophile apologist that's what jk rowling called me and quite frankly i think that's that's the worst thing you can call someone because you're not even a person with a sickness right you're just people making excuse fuck you jk rowling like seriously that's below the belt and one person went absolutely crazy on me carl marx and their banner because i said to them if you accuse people of these things without evidence, you're no better than she is. Boom. And it was a big boom because it was true. Because let's face it, people don't get upset about things that don't sting for some reason or another. I know that. The number of things. That's why I talked about my buttons, my personal buttons off the, the, the top that I have worked on to become less sensitive to that. Because you blow up like that, you lose emotional uh, control when somebody hits something you feel vulnerable on. And it's hard. It's a lot easier than it used to be. And I'm aware that there's potential consequences for me, um, for me taking these stands. I'm aware that some people are just going to blacklist me. Oh, well. It's happened before. Two reasons why I stand by this choice. And I'm proud to get called all of these names on this issue. One is I said 2023 was going to be a focus on honor for me. I am a lawful good character in real life. And a lawful good character stands up for what they believe in no matter what. That is not me saying I'm morally superior to other people. This is me saying this is what I have to do to sleep at night. It's not the same thing. The second is that if I accused someone of transphobia for buying Hogwarts Legacy, I would be a complete hypocrite. Because I saw both Avengers movies and the Justice League movie directed by Joss Whedon knowing exactly what a piece of shit he was one of his victims told me I couldn't talk about it and I needed to see the movies because I needed to be able to talk about them they were major cultural touch points so even though I know I was a piece of shit I saw the movies. I paid to see the movies in the theater. So does that make me a sexist? Does that make me hate women? Does that make me self-hating? No. I made a choice based on a series of really bad options. And I argued the merits of the work itself, the markers of misogyny in the, the movies themselves, not he's a shit person and you're because I couldn't talk about why 
I couldn't. It wasn't my story to tell. If I had said there would have been enough details that it's possible someone would have known who it was and there may have been recriminations on that person. So I can't, in good conscience, condemn someone for something I've done. I have... I have had major issues with George R. R. Martin's writing um, from the books. I've been very open about the fact that I don't think he can write female characters. And people ask, what does it mean when, you know, there's no female experience in uh, uh, writers? I don't have time to get into that today. Uh, that's a topic for another time because it's much longer. Uh, but, you know, I still watch Game of Thrones because Peter Dinklage and Gwendolyn Christie and other actors are fucking brilliant in that original show. And I watched House of the Dragon because, you know, now does that mean I agree with all the misogyny, homophobia, transphobia, anti-Semitism, all that stuff in George R. R. Martin stuff? No. There is no way to consume any piece of media without putting money in at least one horrible person's pocket. Now, knowingly doing it, the thing is, I worked in the entertainment industry. I know. I know anything I consume has a terrible person on it. I love the Wednesday show. I'm really not thrilled that they had a, a policy on set that people had to work sick as a dog before they got a positive COVID test. Like, if they're sick, let them rest. Holy shit, she's 19. You know, I don't like that. But... I love the show and I think she's great. These things are not simple, you know? Every piece of media has one absolutely shitty person working on it, I guarantee you. So you can't assume intents just from what people watch. They may not see it. You know, they may be going through their own stuff. They may be able to look around it and, and I know and one of the reasons I catch myself on this, I am terrible at separating author from, like, creator from work. Other people are much better at it. And again, I don't see that as a moral high ground for me. That's just a personal thing. And that's really what it comes down to with voting with your wallet. I vote with my wallet. I will tell you why. I will tell you why or why not um, I will buy something if I will buy it at full price, so on and so forth. But I am not going to tell anybody else um, uh, not what to do with their money. On, on one hand, it's because in this country, you can state your opinion, but the minute you say you shouldn't either, they can sue you. Um, but also I just, I actually think that's a good line. I don't think I have the right to tell other people what should be in their heart. I, I don't, part of being a lawful good character is recognizing I don't know it all. The difference between piety and arrogance is humility and humility and honor are tied as well. And so I'm not going to be so arrogant as to think I've got every angle covered on a subject. You know, there's casual racism in the Yakuza games, you know. I see it. I acknowledge it. But nothing's perfect, right? And I, I think that's actually just sort of a ground truth in Asian countries. Yes, Asian people are racist against each other. <gasps> it's not just white people, <gasps> you know. But I, I go out of my way to be consistent. I go out of my way to be honorable. And I go out of my way to avoid hypocrisy. And a bunch of people's threats, a bunch of people's name calling is not going to turn me into a hypocrite. And that's why I'm proud to be called names over things connected to J.K. Rowling and Hogwarts Legacy. Because I do care about the safety and dignity of trans people. I do not think a video game purchase 
harms anybody. It may hurt feelings. I mean, I admit I'm a little whenever, you know, and, and th for people who've told me this is a me problem, not a you problem, I get a little mm, when people tell me they're going to buy the game. But I wait to hear the reasons. And then I was like, okay. Um, I see absolutely no need to hand J.K. Rowling an unnecessary moral victory here. It could be the best-selling game of all time. She's still a terrible person. One does not change the other. There are a lot of really cool things created by utterly terrible people. Making something cool doesn't make you less of a terrible person. It just makes you a terrible person with talent. Or a terrible person who got really lucky and ripped off the right sources. Which in the case of J.K. Rowling, yeah, that's Charles Dickens meets Terry Pratchett meets Gormenghast. There's almost nothing original in all of Harry Potter. I'm just not willing to alienate somebody over a video game because I care because I know it's a long game because it's not about what people feel today so much as if I can relax somebody enough to hear me out on the larger trans issue I'm gonna do it if being cool and being supportive, actively supportive of people paying the, playing a game is what it's going to take for them to listen to me on the larger issue. You're damn right I'm going to do it. And I don't care who doesn't like it. Because again, I have been doing this a long time. I know what works. And shaming people needlessly doesn't work. Coercion doesn't persuade. And I'll leave that there. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash K. Because cancellation attempt is happening right now on me. So help me out if you can. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for the six people right now who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash K. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.